Hi, I'm Eric Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com and today this video is simply just a rant so there is no tutorial in this video if you're expecting any tutorial you can move to the next video however if you're interested in using Adobe Premiere you might want to stick around for my ranting well after a video I published last week I received a lot of emails telling me that I have never used Premiere Pro before so my answer is I used Premiere Pro for a very, very long time. Uh, don't expect me to say anything bad about uh, Premiere. It's actually great. Uh, the problem here is Adobe. So let's start with my history with Premiere Pro. I started a very long time ago. I mean, I started in 97 to use Premiere. It wasn't Premiere Pro at the time, of course. And in 2003, I guess, Premiere Pro version one was released. And I started working on it and it was just great. I used it a lot. Uh, so I used Premiere exclusively from 2003 all the way till 2015. I guess that's like uh, 12 years. So what do I mean when I say that the problem with Premiere is Adobe? Well, when Premiere became popular, because you have to understand that Premiere wasn't always that popular. Uh, Premiere only became popular after the original Final Cut Pro was discontinued by Apple and it was replaced with Final Cut Pro 10, which at the time did not suit a lot of the filmmakers that were using it. So what happened was that Premiere filled the gap that Final Cut Pro left. And I was very happy about that, frankly, because the thing I've been using for a very long time just became the standard. And at that point, Adobe decided to abuse the situation. Instead of siding with filmmakers, they decided to abuse the situation. First, they increased the price to crazy levels. Now, I just want to make something clear here. It's great to pay for software. I'm not against charging for software. Actually, that's great and ensures the availability of great software all the time. I understand that. And I do understand that at the end, uh, Adobe is a business that, and they need to turn a profit. But they also have to consider the available alternatives for their products in the market. Because now, it's unbelievably expensive. Uh, to properly use Premiere Pro, you have to pay around $600 a year. Over the lifetime of my subscription with Adobe, I paid more than $2,000 for the software. And the subscription is getting more expensive. And if you're depending on the student discount, it's not available forever. At one day, you're gonna have to get out of the student discount and just pay full price. And what makes matters worse is that they have a very weird pricing system. Uh, that discriminate against filmmakers. So there is no special package for filmmakers. So if you take a look at the pricing here, it's frankly very weird. You have a special pricing only for photographers. So it includes things like Lightroom and Photoshop. Then you can buy a single app, which nobody does, because if I come here and just select a Premiere Pro, I don't have access to all the other softwares that I need, like uh, for example, audio and, and compositing. And the only way to get Premiere with with After Effects and, and, and Audition is to simply to get all the apps. I know that you can get one software, which is still very expensive, frankly, because if you take a look at photography for $9 a month or $10 a month, you get Photoshop and Lightroom, which are the most important ones for photography. However, when it comes to filmmaking, there's nothing. You have to get all the weird applications that you don't even know what these apps are, just for the privilege of using Premiere Pro with After Effects. So they basically force you to pay for things you don't actually need. Like for example, why would I pay for Adobe InDesign and Adobe Illustrator? I just never use them. So the problem here is that they don't acknowledge filmmaker, they only have photographers. And us as filmmakers, we're just an afterthought. We have to pay for everything else to get access to what we need. And that is just not acceptable at this point because currently a lot of great cheaper alternatives exist. Uh, so now we have the existence of things like DaVinci Resolve, which is absolutely free, or Final Cut Pro 10 with one payment of around $300. It's not 2014 anymore, where Premiere Pro was the only game in town. That's not the case anymore. Currently we have more options and there are great options. The other problem is that after Adobe increased the price, they did not develop the product as much. 
Uh, first, you have the weird installer. They have a very weird installer. Uh, that is basically, it's a software they add to your system to install Adobe softwares. So it's like a software that install other softwares and you have to use it. Now, what's the problem with it? First of all, I don't like the installer because it runs in the background and it uses memory even when the file is not open, even when the installer itself is not open. So if you take a look at the activity monitor here, which simply shows you what, what softwares are being open at the moment, it clearly shows that Adobe Desktop services is, is open. So I'll simply come here to Adobe, click here and select quit. So I just quit Adobe software. I have nothing running. I don't have Photoshop. I have nothing related to Adobe running. And Adobe desktop services still runs in the background anyway, which to me seems very excessive. I mean, I don't have anything else running in the background other than it. I'm using, this is the uh, recording software, the, the, the software Camtasia that I use for, for video recording. And the Adobe desktop services is taking 144 megabytes. Maybe that's not a lot, but I definitely don't want it to do so. But it still runs in the background and gets memory. And they also failed to develop the integration system. You still need to move between different softwares when you're using Adobe products. So you still need the dynamic link. Uh, it, the dynamic link, if you don't know, is just something that links Premiere Pro to After Effects, for example. The dynamic link was very cool five years ago, but after trying Resolve now in 2018 and 2019, where you don't need to move between softwares to achieve a very simple task. Like for example, I just click on a tab, work on audio, click on another tab, work on color, maybe do some compositing and fusion and move just all in the same file with a single click away without having to switch software. However, still until this point, you need to move from one software to another when working with Adobe. And this feels so old and outdated now that once you try the newer options. So what else did Adobe neglect or did not develop? Well, they tried to develop their colors. They developed the tools a bit. They developed some of the tools that are related to color, like adding more curves and adding the Lumetri uh, panel. However, still, this is not enough. Their color tab is still years behind what Resolve has to offer. Uh, and also the color science. The colors still look the same. Uh, their coloring is just not as great. And to prove this, just think of one simple thing. Some people edit on Premiere Pro and move their file to Resolve to color it. And then they get it back to Premiere Pro, which means that the color in Premiere is just not as good. However, if you edit on Resolve, there is no need to use Premiere at all. It's not a requirement. And frankly, the viewer doesn't care what you edited your film with. It just doesn't show. However, the viewer really cares what your film was colored with because, uh, you know, just the, the, the amount of color control, the tracking, the windows, the, the unbelievable color control really shows on your final product. But people don't care what you edit it with, which makes Resolve a better option in this case. So, yeah, I, I think... It was completely fine for Adobe to abuse the system in 2000, maybe like 12, 13, 14. There, there were no other options. At the time, Final Cut Pro wasn't so developed. Uh, you know, the Resolve wasn't, did not integrate a lot of editing tools at the time. So it was completely fine. However, now, why would I pay $600 a year? I mean, as a starting filmmaker, you need to pay this money for gear, maybe for some other things that I just can't believe that I paid more than $2,000 for the software. Don't get me wrong. They're a business. They need to make money. However, as a business, they need to consider what other alternatives to their product exist in the market. So I'm totally fine with paying for software. I think it's great. Uh, I think it always makes a software advanced and makes a lot of, um, you know, developers work on software. So you, we really get the best software in that case. However, with the existence of other options, I don't think it's it's right. Uh, it's right for them. No one, no one can tell them what's right or wrong for them. However, for filmmakers, it makes it very hard for me to recommend their products uh, for any starting filmmakers at all. So, sorry for this. Uh, no tutorial today, it's just that I just wanted to rant. I got an email that just got me a bit worked up. <laughs> okay, so please visit us at learncolorgradingandfilmsimplified.com. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com.